Welcome to the 2020 annual National REIC Expo. Is there a second round two or three? Because you have all the people that tell you how to make money. Give my friend Mr. Jason Rojo a round of applause. Is there something life changing right now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. So listen, I have two confessions before we even begin. Number one, my last name isn't Rojo. Congratulations for being here at the National REIC you know, just by you being here, I'm like, sorry, you can't be here. Um, as we go through this, though, we're going to talk real estate a little bit. Uh, I do primarily. We good? We're good? I can yell loud enough if I need to, anyway. How are you guys doing today? Good. Hey. Saturday. Mr. Benwell, the management member of Equity Management. All right, thank you very much for coming in. is that for 30 years I was the attorney for most of the boards of realtors here in Palm Beach County. And he told me I should, we should form an LLC. An LLC? LLC. Hmm. I'm totally sure how it works. Yeah. Some people say fair to Midland. Some people say partly cloudy. What I say is fantastic. How's everybody? Working. Now, here's what happened in Helen's world. Six eight six two five three. Right here. Yeah. Two five three. Yeah. Oh, right there. Fantastic. Right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. closing, there's no games, we will pay cash and we will close quick and we just need more houses. Thank you. Well basically uh, coming to the uh, Investments Club uh, has really given me an education. Jeff and John do a great job and they're always there to help you. So I encourage you to attend your local REIA. <laughs> So PropStream.com, as you guys are aware, it's a web-based application. A username is your email, password to get in, meaning you can log in on multiple devices or you know, to and from your office computer, home computer. Uh, I want to begin the presentation by kind of explaining the left side. This is our toolbar, uh, beginning with your portfolio. Here you'll be able to change your username and password, apply your payment method to expedite the um, other features you pay for through the system like skip tracing and direct marketing. Below the uh, portfolio is your initial icon. So search is the primary area that you will always be uh, dropped down into when logging in. Properties is where your properties will be stored. So it, again, um, as you're getting results, as you're saving results, properties is where we're gonna store your properties and your, your uh, lists that you've created. Contacts is where you're gonna be able to import an outside list that you might have captured from us or from somewhere else. 
Uh, this is also the area where you can manually edit contact information. This is also the area where you'll be doing your skip tracing for contact information. The next icon is campaigns. This is where you'll be able to establish a campaign, select a group that, of individuals that you have saved or properties that you've saved, and then you'll be able to send a postcard, ringless voicemail drop, or an email campaign. You'll even be able to create a free landing page, essentially a one-page website that has an application. So if any of your leads you know, land on your website, they'll be able to fill out their form and you'll be able to get an email notification. The last section is our help section. So we have some very basic video tutorials here and uh, most importantly, our contact information here at the top right. All right, so let's get down to the searching part, the bread and butter of everything. So when you log in, it's gonna capture your IP address and instantly zoom in, in your area. So as you can see, we're here in Orange County, California. But for the last 14 years, we've been collecting data nationwide. So not just in LA or Orange County, you can search. We can search in Miami, Florida. And by doing that, we're gonna zoom into that area. And what you're gonna see here above the map, this is what we call our CAN searches. These are all the unfiltered listing types that you can go through for whatever your investment needs are. Beginning with MLS, these are all the active, pending, sold, contingent, and failed listings. So whether you're trying to run comps like a realtor would, maybe you're looking for failed listings, uh, maybe you're looking for active listings. Uh, we have aggregated up to about 700 MLS boards across the United States. So our coverage in terms of MLS listings is about 92% nationwide and growing. We also have county records, uh, such as pre-foreclosures, auctions, foreclosures, which are bank-owned properties. We've also outsourced what we call the cash buyers list. This is a list of properties that were bought in cash at the time of transaction, whether they were an individual buyer or a corporate buyer. Liens, these are all involuntary liens. So these are tax liens, HOA, mechanical, utility, any other liens uh, that it's attached to the property involuntarily. Great source of leads for any wholesalers out there or look anybody looking for a distressed uh, property owner. Vacant, so we get this list from the United States Postal Service. This is a list of addresses for the, for um, this is a list of addresses for whatever their reasons haven't been addressing the mail for about three or four weeks or more. So here you can find some uh, absentee owners, properties that are in distress. So whatever the reasons, they haven't been answering the mail. So this is a pretty hot list. High equity. So as a company, we've been able to aggregate title information, meaning we're, we've been able to aggregate the sell, the initial sell amount along with the interest rate. And what our system does is it reverse, it pretty much amortizes that information to present day. So we take whatever their initial purchase was, their interest rate, we calculate the minimum payments with that interest rate, and then we subtract it from the current market value. If the difference is $100,000 or more, that's gonna pile up in this area. So here in Miami, Florida, there's about 132,000 properties that are currently sitting on $100,000 or more in equity. We also have uh, attached a few more leads recently. Uh, you can find them in the filter option here at the top. Those leads are free and clear. So these are properties, property owners that own their property outright. We have bankruptcy filings and divorce filings. So if you're interested in these, select one and hit apply down below and your results will populate on the right hand side. Again, nationwide data. So whether you're in Miami or let's say you're on the West Coast searching in Seattle, anytime you search an area, the results at the top will populate for you. Now you have three types, actually four types of searches you can perform. You can perform a search by specific address. So for example, here, let's say we wanted to search this address. We can type in the address manually. And what the system will do is it will provide you the statistics for that property. So rather than just looking for listings, if we're driving for dollars and we find a property that we may be interested in and you don't see a for sale sign, you don't see it in public records as being in per foreclosure or foreclosure, hey, that's perfectly fine. Type in the address, we'll find the records that we've been able to pull so you at least get the information that we've been able to aggregate, who the owner is, when they last bought it, you'll be able to run comps and so forth. So that's a specific address search. You can search by zip code. 
So here's a zip code where I grew up in down in California. You can search by city level as we did with Miami, Florida, Seattle, and the last search that you can perform is county level. So if we wanted to expand our investment area, we can search by an entire county. And as you can see, the results will populate based on that entire county, okay? So again, four possible searches to perform. Uh, the one thing to note when you're doing the county search is we're not gonna be able to provide you the statistics for that area. Um, the reason why I believe that's important is when you are you know, searching a city, a zip code, we're gonna paint the statistics for you. You know, How has the area grown in the last 30 days in terms of price changes or rental prices? What's the square footage last year versus this year? What are the days on market? So if I were to list a three bedroom property today in Miami, you know, what's the average days on market? So about 119 days versus a four bedroom, which is 135 days. We have market trends. So this is just kind of dissecting what's going on in the MLS listing. So they're recording new listings have increased by 10% in the last 30 days. Closed sales have slightly decreased. Uh, so we can do that over 90 days, six months a year. Pre-foreclosures last year versus this year, just kind of giving you an understanding of how potentially distressed the area is. Average monthly rent. So if we were, you know, if we owned a four-bedroom property, we wanted to list it or rent it out, we have the average rental cost for a four-bedroom property. This is not to say that this is exactly what it would cost. Those of you are familiar, you know, a four-bedroom property downtown versus a four-bedroom property with Lake View is definitely going to rent higher than the downtown area or vice versa, depending on how popular downtown is. So just know that this is just an average of all of the properties within Miami. Listing trends is just a little bit more details on what's going on with the MLS, like if the average list prices increase, price per square footage or days on market. We can expand that over a year. List price versus sell price on average, and then the county's recording. So this is what the county is recording in terms of trend. Uh, in trend. So they're recording a slight dip in houses for sale or the houses that have sold in the last 30 days. They're recording a slight dip in price, average sold dollar amount, but they're recording an increase on average price per square footage. And they're also recording that the days on market are actually decreasing, meaning properties are selling a little bit faster than the previous 30 days. Valuable information. For those of you that are already investing in Miami, you probably don't need this. For your sellers and buyers in Miami who don't know this information, very powerful tool. You can hit the print button here at the top right, and we're gonna generate you a PDF report. It's essentially what you just saw right now. So you can print it out, put it in your portfolio, maybe it apply it in your next bid and so forth, okay? All right, on top of the statistics, we're also gonna give you the heat map, which is located in the map itself. Uh, you have a few tools that you can play with. Beginning with analytics here at the top right, this is our heat map. So you have four categories to choose from. We can break the area down based on estimated value, estimated value by square footage, lot size or bedroom. So let's say we've never been to Miami uh, with just a few clicks. We And looking at the color legend here, we know that red represents all the million dollar properties and more. Light blue represents all the properties that are under 100,000 and more. So if I'm looking to start investing in Miami, I've never been there, at a click of the button, I know where the values are throughout uh, Miami, Florida. I can check MLS stats. You know, if I'm looking to eventually buy a property and list it, I can look at listing prices in the area. Or, you know, bottom line, this is probably one of our most favorite of the bunch, price growth. So show me how the area has grown in the last six months. Red represents 100% or 50% growth or more. Light blue is 50% loss. I can look to a year. I can go beyond a year. And so as you can see, the red areas are areas that have grown dramatically in the last three years. So we can now, instead of looking at all of Miami, we can now focus on an area that has growth either in the last three years or the, the last year. And the last category is rental value. So if we're looking to potentially rent out our prices, we have the average price, um, average rental scale for you. So red represents 5,000 or more rental prices on a monthly basis, and then light blue represents 500 or less on a monthly basis. So a very powerful tool. Here's a cool little trick you can do. Uh, I know a lot of investors will do this. They'll do price growth, 
last year. And then here at the top left, we have a draw search feature. Uh, so rather than searching all of Miami, we can now search, you know, for example, this hot strip right here of proper uh, of growth. And so what that's going to do is our system's only now going to populate the results for this little customized box I drew. It's going to provide you the statistics for this box that I drew. And so now we can just focus on all the pre foreclosures, MLS listings, cash buyers, properties with liens only in this specific area. So I highly encourage you guys to use those tools side by side. All right. Uh, bottom right, you have the ability to go from road to satellite. And, and here's a really cool feature. Uh, our maps are hosted by Bing and we've integrated their street view. So if I was interested in number five, I can keep zooming down. I can click on the street and now I have road eye view of number five. So now I can see what the property looks like. All right, get an understanding if there needs to be landscaping done or some paint done in the front side. All right, so really cool feature there and you can see the dots per house, which houses have grown 100% and so forth. So that is our heat map for you guys. Uh, with the draw search feature, definitely use them both side by side. All right, I'm going to actually take this to the west side um, for personal reasons. I'm kind of interested in this area, but I'm going to show you guys the best way to kind of approach the application. All right, so we've seen the statistics. We see the heat map. We now have all these results above the map. What do we do next, right? Well, the next step is we can click on one of these boxes and go through all 59,000 results manually, right? Or the best thing to do is to filter those results. So here at the top, this is gonna be your best friend, the filter option. You'll have over 50 different criteria to apply. Essentially you're stacking or custom building a list. So rather than just finding liens, here's a quick example. We can find all the non-owner occupied liens. Here's the liens that are single family let's say up to you know between three and five bedrooms you know two and four bathrooms i can apply square footage lot size year built home features and that's the property characteristics section now we can play with the mls status so am i looking for a property that's non-owner occupied with a lien that's currently active failed or sold or you know, maybe I'm interested in a certain listing amount or when it was listed, or, you know, maybe it's lasted over 90 days on the market. Perhaps it was listed below our market price that we've calculated, or maybe we just want a property that's not yet listed. Maybe we want to get to the owner before a broker or realtor gets to the owner. Okay. So I'm going to put off market for this example, foreclosure status. So here we can stack, essentially we can find a even more motivated uh, seller. So not only do they have a lien, but maybe they're also in pre-foreclosure uh, with a notice of default or a notice of trustee document attached to it. And let's say that pre-foreclosure was maybe listed just last month uh, with a certain default amount attached to it. Or maybe we're looking for something that's being auctioned two weeks from now, right? So that way it gives us some time to talk to the owner and take advantage of their two week mark before they lose the home. So here you can play with all of that information. The next step is ownership info. So we can specify how many years the owner has owned this property or when the property last sold, what it last sold for, whether the property owner is registered out of state, whether it's also registered as a vacant property by the county, and then owner type. Here we can differentiate whether we want to deal with corporate owned properties or in this example, I'm going to find all the individually owned properties. Okay. The next category is lien bankruptcy divorce status. So here we can specify when the lien was recorded, the amount of the lien. So maybe we can say, you know, start at 5,000 and more, or, you know, don't go beyond 30,000. We can choose a lien type. And then we can also specify whether the property has gone through a divorce or a bankruptcy. Value trend allows you to calculate a targeted range. So let's say you only want properties that are up to 400,000 or a quarter million. Again, we've been collecting data for 14 years. I just showed you the growth map. So we can now identify properties that have grown, let's say 3%, 5% over the, over the last year. 
estimated rental income. So again, we're able to set pro uh, property rentals. So if you're looking to buy a property that rents out for $1,800, so you can get that cap rate you're looking for, this is where you can apply that. And then last but not least, and by far I think the most important, is the equity and mortgage information. So here you can specify, you know, I'm looking for a property that has at least 10,000 in equity or maybe a percentage, right? Show me properties that have at least 30% or more in equity. Uh, number of mortgages, total mortgage amount, loan to value ratio. Maybe I'm looking for someone with a high interest rate or, you know, depending on the when the term of the mortgage is, maybe they're halfway through or when the mortgage will mature. I can choose the type of loan the mortgage is or whether the property was registered at one point as a cash bought property or if the property is owned outright. So again, 50 different options to choose from. This section will allow you to custom build whether you're looking for liens, pre-foreclosures, cash buyers, you name it, apply your criteria here. You're gonna hit apply. And the idea is we go from you know 59,000 recorded liens down to 18 of them that fit our criteria, right? Or again, this is a much more specific list. Um, if we don't want to be that specific, and let's say we just want to, you know, hit a large audience, uh, you know, obviously it's all about numbers. So here, instead of putting like a specific property amount, uh, we can leave the property characteristics out, and again, it increases our our amount here, right? Or hey, you know what? 30% is too high. Let's do at least 10% in equity, right? And you know, I don't. I want them to be owner occupied or non-owner occupied. So either or works for me. Now we've built a much larger list of 425. So very quick on determining what type of list you're trying to create. Now what I would highly recommend after uh, filtering your type of criteria hit the save search button. The save search button will allow you to save that, that filter you just performed. So here we can call this the Riverside Leans. I can add my characteristics, uh, single family, 10% more equity, uh, lean plus pre-foreclosure. Okay. Now here's a cool part too. Uh, you see these boxes at the top, they're not permanent. So if there's a box that you don't like, you can actually check off this box and replace any of these boxes at the top. So if let's say you want to replace the lean box or the vacant box because you don't do it, have fun. If you don't uh, replace a box, that's fine. All of your uh, searches will be here in the all searches folder. So you can save as many criteria as you like. And the last option here in saving the search, and by far the most important I think, is that our system can actually email you immediately if new properties, when we do our next update, if it populates with new results that fit your criteria. So as you can see today, we had 425 results. If I say, hey, email me immediately, if tomorrow morning when we do our next update, if you know five other properties populate within this criteria, I'm gonna get an email with those five addresses on that email. So pretty much it's saying, hey, let's go back into the system and do some research on these five properties, save them, and mark it to them, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Again, you're gonna see that in your all searches folder. The idea here is the next time you log in, no need to type in all that information. You're just gonna click on your template. Results will populate on the right-hand side. So that's searching, custom building, saving your search, and uh, setting up notifications. So that's a very important thing to do. And again, guys, it's not just with liens, we can, go back in here and say, hey, now that we found liens, let's find the cash buyers that are buying single family properties. I want these buyers to be all corporate buyers. And boom, oh, let me, Riverside County, sorry, let me apply that filter, boom. So rather than going through 100,000 cash buyers in Riverside County, I found 4,300 of them that are buying single family properties. And these are all corporate out-of-state buyers. So in my personal opinion, these are the very aggressive uh, cash buyers. And so here again, I can save my search, name it the Riverside out-of-state buyers, have the system email me when a new buyer populates. Maybe I might call them and let them know, you know the type of properties I have in my portfolio or I, ha I have under contract, okay? All right, so let's get back to our lean results. 
Now that we've saved the search, set up notification, the next step is to select the properties, right? So as you can see here, we have 425 properties. And here's what really defies who we are. Besides the amount of data that we have and customizing your search, this is really what defies PropStream, is when you click on a property, we're gonna get all of the data that we've aggregated from attorneys, title companies, the MLS, county records, mortgage records, and we're gonna put them all on this page called the property details page. So here at the top is our dashboard. We have the property image, and if you click on that, we're gonna give you bird's eye view and street level, so you'll be able to analyze the property. Below that is the property characteristics, our estimated value that we've calculated, properties currently off market as we specified earlier, properties in distress, we were looking for a property in pre-foreclosure, here's the lien amount, individually owned, owner occupied, single family, again our estimated value, the last sell date recorded amount back in 2011, how the property has grown in the last five years based on our calculations, our system has captured five comps, averaging value of 771. Average days on market is 85 days. You do have the ability to control that. I'll show you that in just a second. And then to the right, we have our opportunity box. So it's telling us what the potential mortgage balance we've calculated, the lien amount, and the estimated equity on this property right now. Now, all of this information I just went over is in detail down below. So let's start with property details. So we now know who the owner is. We have his property characteristics, HOA information, including his HOA fees, site information, assessment information, last sell date. So here we see that 485 that was recorded up above. We have his mortgage information. So even though the sale was 485, the actual mortgage was 358, so substantial down payment. We got his interest rate. So again, we're reverse calculating and this is how we get that mortgage balance. We have the prior sell information and then location information. All right, so that's just property details, pre-foreclosure details. So now we're analyzing, okay, so he has a notice of default recorded on October 5th. Here's the default amount, the loan origination information, the trustee's information, All right? Lien details, right? This property has a lien. What type of lien is it? Oh, it's an abstract of judgment. Here's the creditor's name. We have the lien amount, and it looks like it's occurred interest, which is why it's climbed. All right, so again, what our system is doing is it's not just saying, hey, here's a list of liens. Here's a list of liens, and here's their details, right? So now I'm, I'm, I'm building a story. I'm trying to understand what's happening with this owner. Now, after liens, we have the ability to run our own comps. So here, we take all the other listing types that we've collected, and you'll see all these boxes down below. So these are all the results within a one mile radius. So here are the 10 comps. So rather than going by what our system says, we can now you know, say, hey, find me all the five bedrooms and three to four bathrooms. All right. So boom, we have six comparables that meet that criteria. Now we can match up square footage. And then as you can see here, we will calculate a new sell price for you. And the cool part here too, is you can hit the view report button and we're gonna generate you a new comps report. So this is gonna show you the new comps that you filtered. It's gonna calculate their low, their high, and their average. It's gonna give you the subject property. And in this case, the six comps that I've filtered for this property. You also have the ability to check out the neighbors. So you can see, if, you know, what if the neighbor sold their house recently? And here's one, number three, sold their house recently for that amount. So it's just giving us an idea of where our property is valued at. And then my favorite uh, feature of the bunch is the MLS listing. So here we draw a one mile radius around the property and we're giving you the most recent 150 MLS listings that we've pulled. So these are all the active, all the sold, all the failed. So again, this is the same data that a realtor would be pulling when running comps. So if you call a realtor and say, hey, here's an address, please run comps for me. This is the listing type that they're gonna be going through. And so here I can see my competition, look at their details, see why they're listing it at that price. Maybe they have a pool and maybe my property doesn't have a pool. So there's lots of ways to measure your property in terms of value. 
then we can see the pre foreclosures, foreclosures. Maybe we can, you know, look for another property in the area that has a, a lien on them, or maybe we need to find a buyer that's already buying in the area. So here's 150 cash bought properties within that area. Very powerful section here. Again, that's comparables in nearby listings. We're also going to provide you the tax information, mortgage information. So here it's going to show you what. Uh, the owner has done since the initial recording. So here is the initial recording. And as you can see, there's been a lot of equity and refinances uh, that has appeared on the property. Okay. Transaction history, just to confirm the transactions, and then documents and reports. So here on the right side are our premium reports. You'll be able to purchase your accessor map or the actual deed of the property. To the left, documents reports. These reports will be generated uh, when you use the analysis wizard. Okay, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is the property details page, and every one of your results will have a property detail. So you'll be able to confirm which properties are the right properties, which properties have you know a substantial amount of equity versus the properties that do not. Okay, so another tool within the details is the ability to print. The property report by hitting the print button we're going to generate a CMA report for you automatically so if you don't want to jump on Excel or do any of that this is what the CMA report will look like characteristics comparables last market sell property information lien information ownership history here are the comparables nearby listings and then we've even included the statistics on here for you guys okay so great report to use to motivate a seller or even a buyer. Analysis wizard, as I was telling you guys earlier, this is just a universal analysis wizard that allows you to per essentially punch in your variables. You know, what did you buy the property for? What's the amount of the default? Uh, did you use a mortgage? If so, what's your mortgage amount? What's your down payment interest rate? Are you looking to rent out the property? If so, what's your rental income? Expenses, what, what are your monthly expenses in terms of owning this property? And then last but not least, sell. So are you going to sell this property when it hits a market value or a certain cap rate? Or are you selling it for a fixed dollar amount? Now, we run the analysis wizard for five years. But if you know exactly, you know, for example, earlier the days on market, it's going to be four months. We can change the five years to run this analysis for four months. And that will calculate what our return on investment will be based on our variables. When you hit finish, you'll be able to print out the complete analysis report. And so... Within a few clicks, we now have a full breakdown of the complete analysis. Income, expenses, tax, property, cash flow. All right. And then we have the rehab calculator. So those of you that are fixing and flipping, you're dealing with contractors, maybe you're now starting to invest out of your area, or maybe you know some of you are going from wholesaling to finally you know fixing and flipping. The rehab calculator is a very powerful tool in the sense, I'm actually saved this property, so Riverside Group, number one. All right, what the rehab calculator will do is it'll calculate local labor costs and uh, parts costs for you. So once I save the property, I'll click on rehab calculator. We're gonna direct you to Blue Hammer. Blue Hammer is used by major insurance companies. So when, for example, someone files a property damage report, um, most insurance companies will tell Blue Hammer, run me uh, estimated costs in the area. That way we're not doing a rough estimate. We're actually getting local values on average. So here, now that the property has been captured, we can start a new project. We'll call it the, uh, let's call it the kitchen project like we have in the past. All right. Once I name my project, I have two approaches. I for the more advanced rehabbers, I can search by individual parts and pieces. So if I know I need to do electrical or exterior painting or interior painting, maybe lighting, maybe carpeting, I can choose my parts and pieces. And eventually, um, Blue Hammer will calculate that information, give you my costs. For those of us that are not advanced, you can search by popular projects that most rehabbers will perform. So in this example, let's say we're doing the kitchen. Um, let's choose cabinets and countertops. Let's say we're going to replace it with an island. It's a medium-sized kitchen. And we're going to use, you know, not the best quality material, but somewhere in between. 
and these repairs will be made in the kitchen. So in just a few seconds, we've now calculated our local level costs for Riverside County to do a kitchen project. So not only have we provided an, a local level cost on average, but Blue Hammer will also break down all the line items that usually is performed for this project, things like removing the faucet, even things like removing the trash from the property and how many hours it's gonna take, what's the cost per hour, and then what's the total cost for the job. This is not to say that this is exactly gonna cost 19,000, but again, this is giving you a foundation to work with. So now that we have this value, if I call a contractor and they say, hey, yeah, I can do it for $26,000, your next question should be, hey, can I see your line items, right? Now you can cross-reference where they're getting those extra few thousand dollars from you from, okay? And so that is our Blue Hammer tool. Very powerful to feature, definitely utilize it. So that's all the features within the property details page. Again, every single property will have that, so feel free to click on it. The next step after researching our properties individually by clicking on it, is of course highlighting our list. So in this case, I'm gonna select all of them and I'm either gonna hit save. Now save will only let me save up to 100. Being that I have more, I'm gonna hit add to list. Add to list will let you save up to 1,000. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna create a new list. I'm gonna call this the Riverside Leans list. All right, so we've just saved our lists. All right, so again, we went from searching Riverside, filtering our criteria, setting up a notification so our system can notify us. We clicked on the property to make sure the margins are right. We now highlighted them all and saved them. So the next step is just to make sure that they're in our properties page. So again, this is where we're gonna monitor all the saved groups. In this case, our list is right here. So I click on that, here are all my results. Here is pretty much, this is where you would probably do your last minute editing and analyzing. So again, it's gonna probably take a few days to negotiate these deals. So over time, you know, you can click on the property to see if anything has happened, you know, in the next few days. Um, what's really cool about this section is these four boxes at the top, they're gonna monitor all the properties that you have saved. So in my, account, I've saved over 12,000 properties and they're all within different groups. Now, rather than going through each group individually and seeing what has happened to each of those groups, our system will pretty much tell you what's going on. So of your 12,000, 796 of them have had new recordings. So when I click on that box, the 796 will be just below and it's gonna tell me what marketing lists or what groups they're in. So now I can highlight them all maybe remove them or add them to a new group. Recently sold, right? So this is telling you if any properties may have sold under your nose. So here we, again, we can highlight them, move them to a different group or delete them. Status changes, so if any of your properties may be gone from off market to active or you know active to failed. And then my personal favorite is auctions. So of my 12,000 properties saved, 267 of them are up for auction right now. So these, I believe, are the most highly motivated sellers right now. And I'll probably wanna highlight them, export them, and start cold calling. Or, if I don't have their numbers, contacts. So contacts is where I'll be able to take the groups that I've saved in properties and collect contact information. And so in contacts, the skip tracing feature is here on the left side called the pen jobs. All you'll have to do is hit add new. Step one, choose your group. So here at the top, I'm gonna choose my Riverside liens list. Here are my owners. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure they're all selected. Hit add selected contacts. So here they are down below. They're all highlighted now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and step one is now completed. So 288 have been selected. Let's go ahead and go to step two. Step two is asking us what type of information we'd like for each address. So skip tracing feature currently is 10 cents an item. So for these 200 addresses, I want one landline each if, you can, if the system can find it, two cell phones if possible, and two emails if possible. 
we as a company will automatically exclude any numbers that are on the do not call list. Or if you want, we can include those numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna exclude them, hit next. Here's my contacted list, my total costs. I'm gonna go ahead and hit place order. I'm gonna name this the uh, Riverside Lean List with contact info. And boom, so now I've just processed a skip trace drop and you can see it here, my Riverside Leans List with contact info. The system is currently processing my order. So in about 15 minutes to 20 minutes or half an hour, depending on how large your list is, of course, the system is gonna go from processing, and as you can see here, no emails and no phone numbers are applied, to complete. So here you're gonna see complete at the top, and we're gonna automatically put the emails and phone numbers in here for you. So again, this is a one I did a few weeks back, 190 people. So we're gonna go from processing, no emails, no phone numbers, to complete, here are the emails and phone numbers, and here's the cool part. If you click on view summary, it's gonna tell you what the results are, and that's actually the price that we're gonna charge you. So we're only at the moment charging you for the success rate, okay? All right, so boom, just like that, we went from searching, filtering, setting up notifications, analyzing properties, saving them, skip tracing them, now we got their contact information, and last but not least is you know, at this point, actually, before I go to the next stage, um, after we get our results, you can actually highlight them and export them. So if any of you guys are using your own marketing elements or applications, hey, again, we're a data provider, so once you skip trace it, you can highlight them and export it to a CSV file. So you'll see the CSV file down below. Or if you don't have those elements available, allow us to take care of that for you. So here is our campaign section. To start a campaign, it's very easy. You'll hit new campaign, name the campaign, so Riverside Campaign. We're gonna choose our group, so I'll select the group, and this time, I'm gonna choose the group from the appended jobs list, right? So I'm gonna choose my Riverside Leans with contact info. I'll be able to market to more than one group if I wanted to or just stick with one. Once I select my name and my, my target, I'm gonna hit save. The system will say, hey, you've successfully saved your campaign. Here's the name of your campaign. And the first thing it's gonna tell you to do is create a website. This is for free and I highly recommend that you do it. Uh, the reason for this is it's a landing page. But most importantly, there's an, e there's an application process on your landing page. So if someone does land on your landing page and they like what they see, they can fill out the form hit send and you'll get an email notification uh, with their personalized message that they put on the email or on the website. So when you start the website, the first thing you're gonna see is the website name. As you can see, it matches this last part here. We're gonna give you a generic URL. So the idea here is you wanna change the last part. So um, Burton the lean guy, right? So someone will say, hey, it's not available. Okay, probably you've used that already. Um, Burton helps you with liens. Boom, that's available. So as you can see, this is gonna be our URL once we finish this website. Contact email, we put your username, but if you have an assistant and you want the notifications to go to them, put your assistant's email. Enable website template. So as you're designing your own website, we can store that for you. So if you want us to save it so you can use it again for a later campaign, make sure to check it off or leave it unchecked if you don't want us to save it. And then you have two options. You can start with a blank website or you can use one of our predefined templates. Now, the predefined template's really just giving you a banner. So as you can see, we're giving you a banner. But if you don't want to use a template, um, you can start with a blank one and upload your own. You can add a logo, you can add some images to this website, and then the header text and the body text. So instead of we buy houses, you know, hello, my name is Burton and I'll, you know, buy your house. All right. Perfect. So we just edited our header line, you know, been in business for 15 plus years. So 
cash sales cash sale only right so boom so i've created my body header text my body text maybe i want this a little bit bigger there we go now that i've designed my website i can actually preview it before i launch it so now we can see what it looks like and all right there's my header here's my thing here's the application this is the preview page if i like what i've done i'm just going to hit publish and now the website's activated. What does that mean? It means that this URL is now a legitimate URL. So as you can see here, this is my URL. This is actually my website now. So I can put this on my Facebook page, maybe on my business cards. I mean, you name it. Uh, so in just a few seconds, literally, we created a website for our specific campaign. So hopefully of the 200 people that I have, you know, some of them will land on this website and then fill out their information and then I'll get an email that they're interested. All right, so we just created a website. I hit back, this is our campaign dashboard. So here's the name of our campaign. And again, to the left side are all of our active campaigns, all of our inactive campaigns. And again, as you can see, each campaign will have different activities you can perform, a different amount of people for each campaign. And then each campaign again has its own website, all right? All right, so name of our campaign, top rights to shut down your campaign. Be careful with this. This will shut down any activities that you have, including your website. So don't shut it down right away. Probably might want to keep your campaign active for a little bit. Below end campaign is the when the campaign was initiated. Your website, you want to edit your website, select edit. Below that is the activity monitor. So here it's monitoring how many targeted recipients we have, how many postcards we've sent, how many impressions, how many emails have been clicked on, how many voicemails have been delivered, how many websites have been visited, or how many times our website was visited. And as you can see here, we visited our own website, so it already hit us. All right, postcards. This is the activity monitor uh, part now. So pretty much getting to the last stage here. Three campaigns you currently have beginning with postcards, you're ready to get started and name your postcards. So I'm going to call it the Riverside Cards number one because I'm going to do more than one. I get to choose two sizes, the standard size postcards or the 5x5, 8x5. The difference besides sizing is pricing. Standard is $0.64 cents a card. I'll repeat that. Standard is $0.64 cents a card. Larger size cards are $0.78 cents a piece. Again, they're 78 cents a piece, so standard 64, five by five, eight by five, or 78 cents a piece. Third option, do you want us to store your design? So if you are gonna upload your own template and you're gonna use it again in the future, definitely make sure to check that off so we can store it for you. And then the last option here is, do you wanna start with the blank postcard or use one of ours? Um, if you decide to start with the blank postcard, uh, this is your editor, uh, very basic, very simple. Um, so you can either upload your own image by browsing your image, or you can just go straight to advanced edit and just create a postcard from scratch. So I know some of you guys might do like a yellow card and then, you know, just maybe put your name in here or something like that. So yeah, once we have our yellow card, you know, we can extend it. You know, my name is Burton. We can change our font, change our size. So, I mean, you name it, you can, fully customize the type of card you're looking for. Um, if not, again, you can use our template if you don't have the time to do that. Uh, and here are templates that you can use. What's even cooler is even if you upload your own template or use our template, you can still go to advanced edit and redesign. So if you upload, let's say, a picture of the property you're trying to sell, you can go in advanced edit after uploading the image, and then now you can add layers on top of it. So we can move the header up, uh, maybe we want to add like a logo in the bottom down here, maybe our picture here at the top right. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with the postcard. Ultimately, once you're done editing your postcard, uh, you'll be able to preview your postcard to see what it's going to look like. You can download your postcard. So if you don't want to use our service, you can download your image and you know manually send them out yourself or take them to a different provider. Or if you want to send it through us, you can hit print and mail, we'll publish your design, and then we're gonna give you the preview. So you definitely wanna make sure everything looks good. And then you'll hit continue, I have approved my proof, and we're gonna give you the cost. 
So we're going to take the design you just created through our system and directly send it to the addresses for you. All right? And as you can see, we send it first class USPS. Okay. So that is our postcard. We're going to go ahead and hit save. All right. So once we create our postcard, you'll see it here. It's unpublished. I'm not, I haven't sent it out yet. Uh, but we, we have two more activities to perform. If we wanted to, we can hit add activity and we can do another postcard. So again, we can do, you know, let's say two weeks have gone by. We can call this a postcards number two and do it all over again. All right, so, you know, we'll hit save. So, you know, we sent a postcard last week. We sent a postcard number two this week. Uh, maybe we want to do an email this time. So we can do email marketing, you know, neat name the email so email number one what do you want the subject to say you know hey i buy tax lien properties third step click through url now if you created a website with us we automatically will put your website here the idea here is when they get the email they'll be able to click on the email and then they'll get redirected to whatever website is in this field so if you have a website with us we'll automatically put that in there for you or if you want to put your own business website or your Facebook page, feel free to do that. Third is delivery date. So we will send this out immediately or we can send it out maybe on a weekend in the evening when everyone's at home. Next step is do you want us to save your template? Again, check for yes, uncheck for no. And then the last step is do you want to start with a blank email template or do you want to use one of ours? And it's very similar to the other editor. So here at the top left, banner, top logo, bottom logo, header text, you know, Burton will buy houses fast and fair offer today. As you can see, that changes. Body text, and then we have th four or five different layouts to choose from. And then once you hit publish, it's gonna send it out based on your schedule. But before you hit publish, you're probably wondering, well, how is it gonna look? Uh, you can hit preview and actually email it to yourself. And then within a few seconds, you're going to actually see what that email is going to look like. Uh, that way you can say, okay, you know what? I need to do it differently. And actually, I think I just got that email. So here it is. Hey, I buy tax lien properties. I'm going to click on that. Here's the preview of what the email campaign is going to look like. Burton will buy houses fast and fair offer today. Here's my body tax. And if I like, let's say I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a, distress owner and I love, you know, this is helping me. I love what I see. I can click on learn more and guess what's going to happen? Redirect it to that URL that you put. In this case, they're redirected to my landing page where they can learn a little bit more about me. Maybe, you know, see my picture here. And, you know, if they like what they see, you know, they can put Simon says uh, an email, Simon at yahoo.com, a phone number. And then, you know, Burton, I need help. Give me a call as soon as possible. All right, I'm going to hit send. And then what do you think is going to happen? That's correct. <laughs> You're going to get an email notification. Uh, and here it is. So, prop stream. Boom. Simon says, that's loading the background image, but Simon says, here's his email phone number, Burton, I need help. Give me a call. So, once I establish my campaign, I can, you know, be out with the family having movie night or dinner with the wife. And I got a notification that someone just, you know, answered my call, right? So very powerful system you guys have in front of you. And then again, the next step after previewing it, you're going to want to hit publish and we're going to send it out uh, based on your schedule. Okay, so I'll save this. And as you can see here, we've done three, right? One postcard did one a following week later we did an email campaign maybe i want to send another postcard again uh, round three or maybe round two of emails so you have you can keep adding activities that's the cool part the last um, campaign we have is the ringless voicemail drop again i'm going to repeat this ringless voicemail drop this is not robo calling no one gets a ring uh, no providers are involved. It's literally our digital system sending a message to their digital system. So they're not going to get charged for anything. Again, they won't get a ring. What's going to happen is they're going to get a missed call notification with the caller ID that you get to apply yourself. And then they get your specific, uh, your customized message that you've either uploaded or recorded through us. Okay. So let me show you how easy it is to set that up. Four steps. 
Step one, select caller ID. Clearly, those of you who are new don't have one. You're gonna hit add, apply your caller ID, and hit save. Boom, caller ID is now created and you can use it again later on. Step two, select a recording. If you don't have one, add a recording, name it, lean recording. And then you can either upload your own audio file. So if you guys are recording yourself, just make sure it's in a WAV format and you can upload your own audio recording. Or for the not so tech savvy guys out there, don't worry, we got you covered. Click on create new recording. We're gonna give you an 800 number to call and your specific pin. They're gonna record your message over the phone and at the very end of it, you're gonna hit save new recording and then it's gonna create your drop down message. And here's a cool part, you can actually hit the play button and, and listen to your recording before you even send it out. So you can make sure that the message is clear, your tone is correct, uh, maybe there's some information you forgot to include so you can redo it. Third step is scheduling. So, you know, call drops, you're gonna name it first, or, you know, Friday call. Now, the thing with scheduling is we send it the day of. There's no timing this for later on. Like, you can't do that, uh, not yet at least. So we do send it the day of. Being that today is Friday, we're gonna send it between the hours of 9 and 5 p.m., or I can extend that, maybe have it go out until 9 p.m. at night. Now, the reason why we give you the other days is some of you guys out there, and I'm sure there are tons of you guys out there, you guys are gonna be uploading thousands of lists in this voicemail drop. And so the reality is, uh, if you do have like 10,000 people to call, uh, even from nine to nine, there may be leftovers, right? So at nine o'clock, when we stop making those calls, there might be four or 5,000 left over. The leftovers will pick up on the following day. So if there are 4,000 left Friday night, the remaining 4,000 will pick up based on whatever time I put. So I can say, hey, start 12 o'clock uh, Saturday morning, call the remaining 4,000 at Saturday, stop at five. If anything is left over, it goes to the next day, okay? So remember that we send it the day of, there's no scheduling in advance. So you're gonna hit save after you create your recording. And then the last option here is calls per minute. Now we can do up to one call per minute, or up to 30 calls per minute. It does not change your pricing. So let's talk about that. What is pricing? It's 10 cents per drop. And what I mean by drop is the drop has to actually go through. So if the call is, let's say the voicemail is not set up or the voicemail is full, or maybe the number might be disconnected. If that's the case and we cannot drop your message, we don't charge you for that drop. So if we have 100 numbers and we only drop it 92 times, your message, then it's 92 times 10 cents is what you're gonna pay. So instead of charging you 10 bucks, it was $9.20 to do your ringless voicemail drop. Okay, so the calls per minute doesn't change your pricing at all. Really what this does is get through your list as fast as possible. And this is a perfect example. I have 228 contacts. I can either do one call a minute and spend 228 minutes calling these guys, or I can do 30 calls a minute and in about 10 minutes, I've dialed 300 calls or 300 numbers. So 228 minutes versus 10 minutes. I mean, how fast do we wanna get our message to these buyers, right? That's the idea. So calls per minute doesn't change your pricing. I usually recommend just maxing it out, get your numbers, get your message out to them as fast as possible. That way you can start the next voicemail campaign, okay? So after we do steps one through four, save and activate, and boom, your voicemail drops are now being delivered. So with that said, that is propstream.com for you, everyone. So this is our campaign section. Just to kind of go back from the beginning, let me kind of reiterate what we did. Four searches, specific address. If you're driving for dollars, you can start typing in addresses to get their details, especially if they're not listed within any of our categories. Step, uh, you can search by zip code level, city level, or county level. Once you do that, you'll get the statistics, you'll be able to use the heat map, you'll get the unfiltered results above the map. I highly recommend you use the filter to customize your list. Make sure you know the properties that you're looking for have like 30% in equity or maybe single family or you know owner occupied, yes or no. Once you apply your results, your results will populate on the right-hand side. Before clicking on any of them, I would recommend that you save your search 
and set up the notification. And you can do that by hitting Save Search. Remember, if you don't replace any of our boxes, your searches will be here in the All Searches folder. Once you get your results on the right-hand side, you're going to want to click on those properties and analyze them, right? What do they owe? What do I not know about? You know, did they file for bankruptcy? Let me look at their comps. Let me look at their neighbors. I mean, let me look at their transactions. You know, has he been irresponsible with the uh, HELOCs and stuff like that? Once you've analyzed your property, you're going to either individually select them or highlight them all and either save to a group. Again, groups are up to 100. If your results are more than 100, hit Add to List. You'll be able to save up to 1,000. Once you save them, we store them in your properties. This is where you do your last minute editing, deleting, merging into one group or another. Contacts is where you'll be able to manually edit information or here on the left side, append jobs. By selecting add new, you'll be able to perform a skip trace. Pretty much take a group that you've saved, collect contact information. Once you get their contact information, you'll be able to highlight and export them or you can now take that list and take it over to our campaign section where you'll be able to create a campaign specifically for that audience. And then within that campaign, you'll be able to establish a landing page for them, which has an online application, send postcards as many times as you like, or you can do a ringless voicemail drop. Oh my God, that list is done. Look at that guys, look at that. I'm sorry for interrupting myself, but look at that. 228, look at our results, love it. All right, and then view summary, and this is what the cost was for this 228. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but after this call, I am sending voicemails and emails. <laughs> uh, but yeah, after we get our results just like this, uh, we have our results for the uh, Riverside uh, that we just performed. So here I can you know, highlight them all and export them onto an Excel sheet or, um, just like we did, I'll start a campaign, call it the Riverside campaign, upload them, create a website and send out my marketing elements. And hopefully they'll either call me directly or land on my landing page and you know fill out my form and then I get that email notification to call them right away. So with that said, guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope this sheds some light on how to best approach this application and you know what we've been doing for the last 14 years and kind of helping you um, not just get a listing, which anybody can do nowadays, right? Anybody can go to a website and get a list, right? But what defies who we are is the ability to analyze the property, right? So yeah, you got a list, but what about the property? Do you know who the owner is? Do you know if maybe they filed for bankruptcy or do you know if they owe something on their mortgage or, you know, that's what PropStream.com is here for. It's to help you analyze it to really get the right leads, skip trace, and then market to them. So I like to consider it like a one-stop shop for investors. Um, so with that said, again, thank you guys. If you have any questions, give us a call or email us. This, record, this demonstration was recorded. So if you need a copy, uh, give us a call or email us and we'll send that copy over to you guys. Okay, guys. Again, thank you so much. If you have any questions, make sure to call us. Have a good one.